Hey, this is Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about these big rustic letters I make. I'm going to show you how to make your own. Well, I'm going to start out by apologizing for losing the footage of me tracing this giant G onto the OSB backer board. But basically, I have a local company that makes these giant stencils for me out of just some thick uh, backer for framing, I guess. Um, you could probably have it done in any local framer or interior design place usually does that kind of stuff for you. You can just trace it onto here and cut it out with a jigsaw like I did there. Then I use about 150 grit sandpaper and just kind of go around the edge to get the splinters off that the jigsaw might have left. And if there's any uh, inconsistencies from the jigsaw because it's really hard to get a nice straight cut with those, um, you can go around with the orbital sander or anything like that and uh, smooth all that kind of stuff out. Now if you want, you can absolutely stop at this step. Uh, you have a basic letter here, you can throw a round over on there, paint it, stain it, whatever, it'll look good. If you are going to stop here, I would recommend using some sort of nice three-quarter plywood, um, not OSB. This just doesn't look very well when it's done. Um, but for me, I'm going to put slats on there, so it'll look basically like pallet wood, but I use cedar roughs on 1x4 cedar that I have. So uh, I'll show you how to do that in these next steps. So these are the 1x4. Uh, cedar boards I was talking about. I get them from a local mill. They're just cutoffs, but you could use pallet wood or even just one by four pine from the local home store. You just want to lay them out on the backer board and make sure they go all the way across so you can cover the whole thing. So essentially you want to just take the whole thing and flip it upside down. Um, just go one by one. Make sure you keep them in order and then go ahead and lay your G back on top of it upside down as well. So like I said, go ahead and lay your letter on top and then uh, make sure it's upside down and kind of matches where you had it laid out before and then go ahead and trace it out. Then what you'll be left with is a nice outline so you know where to put your glue. So then take the longer boards that have a lot of wood hanging over the edge and take them to your miter saw and just trim off the excess so you don't have a bunch of extra wood you don't need uh, fighting you the whole time. I had quite a few, obviously. When you're done with that, you should lay them back out and line up your trace marks, and you should be left with something that looks like this. So now go ahead and grab your wood glue and just fill in all the trace lines that you made before. Uh, try not to get outside any trace lines, that way you don't get glue on your router bit when you go to trim it out. But uh, I like to use Type Bond 2 for this, um, or 3, it doesn't really matter, or any good wood glue, I just prefer Type Bond. So now you can just grab your backer board and place it inside the trace lines. Try not to move the boards around, obviously. You want them to stay where they were, and then just press it down to uh, start the adhesion. I use brad nailer with brad nails. Um, you want to make sure that your brad nails aren't too long and go through the front face. I use one inch on this particular one. Just double check and make sure it's all lined up within your trace lines, and then uh, you can start the fun part. I like to go around the whole edge first, just to make sure everything's secure. I typically put two to three brad nails in each board. It just seems to work well and hold it nicely on there. And then just go back and put some random ones here and there in the middle of the boards. Uh, I possibly tend to get carried away at this point. Go ahead and let the glue cure for about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure it's not going to move on you when you flip it over. And then go ahead and get it flipped over. This is one of the greatest inventions ever, I swear, especially for this stuff. This is a trace bit, straight cut. Um, that bearing on the bottom will ride along the backer board and just trim your front face to exactly the pattern of the back. Once you have your depth set, you can go ahead and clamp your piece down to your workbench. Um, I do this outside because it's actually pretty messy. I turned the sound off for this part because it was horrible sped up. But uh, just go ahead and trace it out. It actually is a lot easier than you would think. 
Um, some of the smaller pieces do fly off at you, so just be aware of that. Wear safety glasses and all the protective gear that you feel is necessary. So go around the whole edge, making sure to get nice and close to all the corners and everything. You don't want to have a weird wobble in there. And I just use a quarter inch round over bit. This is in a monotool uh, bit from Tools Today. I really like them, they work very well. Um, I'll have links to all the tools and bits and everything that I use down in the video description below if you're interested. I'll have links straight to them so you don't have to go searching. So run the round over around the whole letter. Um, I should mention there is a right and a wrong way to use a router. If you're going a direction and it's pulling away from you, you're doing it wrong. So go ahead and switch directions. It's a lot safer and it reduces quite a bit of tear out. I always like to blow everything off with the air hose when I get done routing because like I said, it's pretty messy and gets wood chips and sawdust and all the cracks and everything like that. And you just wanna reduce that as much as possible. So there probably will be some imperfections around the edge. Just grab a sander and just smooth out as much as you can. Obviously the sander won't fit on the inside, so you're gonna have to do that the old fashioned way. Grab a piece of sandpaper and go to town. I typically use about 150 or 180 grit on this. It's kinda up to you. Um, and then sand to your liking. I also turn the sound off on this part because the high pitch of the sander going that fast make you want to tear your hair out. And back to hand sanding. I know how much everybody loves it. Just want to go ahead and make sure your roundovers are nice and smooth on all your edges and everything and then uh, go on the corners as well. Round those over. Go back with your air hose and try to clean it up as best you can. You don't want a bunch of dust when you go to stain it. You don't necessarily have to stain the back, but I always do. I think it looks a lot better. Just keep in mind that the OSB will soak up quite a bit of stain, so you will be spending quite a bit of time back here, and it's kind of hard to get it into all the holes. But I think it looks a little better. Once it's all covered, go ahead and wipe all the stain off, and then you can flip it over to do the front. I like to start with the edge first. You want to make sure to get it in all the cracks and everything, because you will see that lighter wood through the dark stain if you miss a spot. Trust me. Same thing with the front. I always go along the joints and try to get stain pushed down in the cracks and then go across the face. It seems to work out better that way. Once you get it all covered and you think you got all the spots, go ahead and wipe it off and uh, just check to make sure you got full coverage. If you plan to use finish, I would let the stain dry for at least 24 hours before doing so. Um, I've used quite a bit of spray finishes on this kind of stuff. They work pretty good. Well, that just about does it. You could uh, go ahead and put some hangers on the back here if you wanted to hang it up or anything like that. A lot of people use them for guest books, for weddings, uh, just wall decor, stuff like that. So um, if this video is something you guys liked or enjoyed, please like, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell up there to get some uh, notifications when I put new videos out. So thanks for watching. See you next time.